Hey guys, so for code this month, we're gonna go over a API creation. And for an API, it's much like your microwave of, of being able to go in and, and hit the buttons and it take on certain functions like popping popcorn or to input data to say, start for two minutes and then it stops and it just has a bunch of functionality. An API uh, on the internet is the same way. It has functions, it has uh, the ability to consume data or send data just depending on what's built into it. So we're going to build an API for a job board and for the job board we're going to be able to create jobs and create um, uh, I guess you the next thing you could do is create candidates. Let's just keep this short So we'll just do the jobs. We're gonna do this off the cuff and to see how it turns out We're gonna do it with node.js and mongodb I have a little bit of error handling We're gonna mess with you're gonna also learn how to use the terminal and git and uh, Postman and also the mongo client that you can compass. I think is what it's called. We can use that to to build this so or, or view and, and check how things are going so only thing I need to do is uh, start and create a API so I'm going to do a new repository and we're going to call this job board and it'll be a job board API and we'll just do node and mongodb alright so we're just going to create the repository and we're going to create a new repository on the command line, add, readme, commit. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So let's go in here to my terminal. I'm going to clear and we'll do mkdir the job board folder. We're going to cd into job board and then we will this basically spit out all those commands, origin master. It's gonna push up those changes, I think. Yep, just my little commit rocket, push rocket there. All right, so let's jump back in here, refresh, see I have a readme, and then now let's get this project going. So first thing we're gonna do is install a few dependencies, and we're gonna be using nodemon on the development dependencies so that every time we make a change to the server, we don't have to restart the server, and also it'll help when erroring comes up too, because if you have an error, it'll kick you out of the server and you have to go back to the terminal to start it up. So, you, so we don't have to think about it so much, we can just have the nodemon install set up. So let's do npm is node, so I guess a couple things we'll have to have installed here are, um, we'll do node.js, Nope. So make sure you have this installed. We'll also do mongodb install. So you'll want to run through the install for mongodb and see. So you'll have an install for Linux, Mac OS, um, and Windows. Also have Postman set up, download. Um, Postman API development environment. So it helps you uh, test your API and also have an extension for Postman and JSON formatter. So formatter is enabled and then Postman is enabled. So I've got those two here. And then I think that's it to run this. Um, let's let's see how it goes and I'll, I'll let you know if we're missing anything along the way. So we're going to install save, oh, save dev. So we're going to create uh, the package JSON file. We're going to save a dev dependency that is nodeman or nodemon and so n-o-d-e-m-o-n -E and then that's going to create that dependency and we'll open up vs code here in a little bit as our editor so at least to show you that is that installs vs code install uh, vs code you can go to download uh, here as well code.visualstudio.com this is the editor I'm using all right, I'm going to close these guys down. All right, back to our terminal here. Um, we're going to npm install save. We're going to install express. We're going to have mongoose. Express is going to be how we do our routes, and mongoose is how we interact with MongoDB. And then the last one is going to be body parser. And that'll be the 
The only other thing we'll, we'll do is a middleware to interpret what was sent and then uh, grab the, the body content and being able to, to, to show what, that, what was in the body. If we do a form push or we want to see um, the data that was uh, sent to the request. Anyways, you'll get that along the way. But I'm saving this as a production dependency. And so I'm going to hit install on that. I'm going to open up a new terminal real quick just to CD work in progress uh, job board. And then inside here, we'll do code dot. And I'm just going to close that window out. All right. Um, inside of here, maximize window. I'm going to create a few things. Um, Oops. No, we're in the right spot. Why is my package JSON not here? Job board. I don't see package JSON. LS, read me. Where did it install this stuff? npm install, save dev and open. Support project via collective node donate. I'm expecting something here. Weird. Code. I'm blown away. Why is there not a package JSON here? Restart to update. Um, It all comes clear. All right, so we have not initiated npm. So npm init y. Only thing I'm going to do is come in here and in my package JSON, I'm going to say the author is myself. Nice. So back out. All right. So now we're going to install Nodeman, and then we will install the uh, Express body parser and Mongo mongoose into the project. So um, node modules is getting pumped in. You can see these pieces getting created. I'm going to go ahead and start the next install. Um, there. <clears throat> so inside here, you can already see that the dev dependencies is Nodemon, and then the dependencies underneath this will be added as Body Parser Express and Mongo. So that's what the npm install is doing, is just setting up that, hey, these dependencies need to exist, and next time you open this project, or someone else does, or myself, and I don't have it on my computer, I can just type in npm install, and it'll install all of these dependencies we need for dev and production. All right, so now that we have those pieces in, let's go and create our project here. So we'll do index.js, because that is the, the main section of our, our project here. You can see that in package.json, so that's the entry point into our app. And then in index, we're going to add in the express dependency. We're not using ES6 here. Whoa, what is that? Uh, require, and then we'll add in express. Express. And then we'll have a const for... All right, so with the... Express added, we're going to add in the mongoose. So require and mongoose. And then const, we'll also add in body parser. So we'll do body parser and then require, do it again, require the body parser. All right, so those dependencies are there. We want to set up our app, so const uh, app variable, and it's express, did it again, express. And here we have um, our apps uh, basically ready to go. So the only thing we need to do is we need to set up that we are watching uh, for this to, to get going. So we'll do app, which is our new variable for our express app. We're gonna have the listen method used so we can listen to any changes. Um, we're going to set it up to be process.environment. Basically, if we ever went live with this, we could use process environment uh, port 
as the variable, and if that doesn't exist, then we'll use something like 4000 as the port. So again, not ES6, uh, maybe we can add that later, but the function, we're going to do cons console log into our terminal that we are ready for um, to basically accept, accept uh, requests. All right, so in this API, we're going to be adding jobs, and we need to have some kind of reference to the, the items that we're going to be adding. So let's go and do this. We're going to um, see. We're basically init the app, and here we'll we'll need to connect to our to Mongo uh, Mongo DB after a little while will initiate routes and we're gonna do use forward slash API as our, as our beginning route and that way if we ever decided to put templates inside of this where we could present the jobs to a HTML layout I don't think that's the, the way I'm gonna do this but we could um, we could put forward slash home forward slash jobs but for here we're gonna reference the API specifically and say forward slash API anything after that is gonna be raw data getting pumped out so forward slash API and outside of here we're going to require a file that we have not yet created which is going to be the um, open quotes dot routes folder so we're gonna have a routes folder and in here we're gonna have API is the the file at api.js ready to go only thing um, we're missing is We'll have some error handling later, but the part where we want to read out the, the body parser, if anything is getting used, we want to basically expose it as JSON. And anyway, so at, the, at any request, we're going to pump out JSON as our result, and then that way uh, we can consume it uh, in, in our HTML later with, with JavaScript. All right, let's make sure uh, this is working. Let's make sure we have this file so it doesn't get angry. I guess before we do that, we'll comment it out, run it. Uh, what we can start off with is just using node and index.js. That runs here, and you can say we're ready for requests. If we go to localhost, see, localhost 4000, we're going to get that. If we go to... Um, to our uh, server again, and it does say ready for requests, which is what we pumped out into our console log here. So now let's start adding routes so we can start using the API. Inside of here, we'll create a routes folder, and then inside of here, nope, we're gonna create a new file inside routes called api.js, and enter. That's gonna be this place right here, and so, in our API, we're going to pull in um, const express because we're dealing with routes. Ex ah. Express equals require, and then we'll do ex express and const router equals express dot router so we can start creating our routes this way const job is going to be or we'll use for our our uh, model in just a little bit but uh, we'll come back to that so let's comment this out but the router um, has uh, many methods on it and the one we're going to use to start with is git and that's how we're going to get information from the database and we could also use post to let's do this. You'd use post to push inputs into the the database. So we will um, get get all jobs. We'll do get one job. We will add new job. And then here we could update job, which would be post or put put. And if we want to delete a job, we would uh, delete a job with 
delete. Super. All right, I'm going to comment these out for now. And we're going to work with uh, this. All right, so our first route is going to be jobs, in that we want to list all the jobs we have. And we're going to have a callback function. This means that after this route has been called, what's going to happen next? And so inside of this function, git sends three things to us, and that is a request, what the request was, the response of what we're going to spit out, and then next is what's going to happen next, basically uh, um, the next step, maybe like middleware going right there. Um, we'll have a job, but right now we don't have a database, so there's really nothing we can pump out, but we can see something. So let's console log the... Um, let's uh, let's go fetch jobs and then we can respond send um, see all jobs here so if I go back um, nodemon okay nodemon needs to be used because every time I make a change to the server it's 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 it it will it will not refresh if I'm using node. So nodemon makes it to where every time I make a change, it refreshes, it's waiting for the next request, and things just keep on rolling. So that's really nice. So the, the server won't fail or won't get updated until I stop and start it. So instead, I'm going to use nodemon to kind of keep things rolling, and you'll appreciate this as well. So if I go back into my readme, and it's going to create a setup instructions, and you'll do that by typing in in the terminal you'll do npm install and then we'll also do a nodemon uh, index.js and then that will basically get you up and running with the, the server um, you will want to open up a open new terminal terminal window and uh, start uh, mongodb and we'll do that with uh, Mongo D. Oh God. All right, so save that. At least we have some instructions. Let's go ahead and use this first route and see how that turns out. Um, we have Nodemon. Okay, it's crashing. Why is it not liking? All right, so it says the router is not existing. So let's go back to the editor and router. Is, mis is misspelled here, so that's always important. All right, so we'll jump back to terminal and hit save, router use, through exception or requires middleware function to get a function type. Aha, okay, so we have not exported router and so if the only thing we have left to do is we've created this express router and we're, we're adding routes to it, but we, we imported the, the API here, but it doesn't know what to import. And so what we have to do is export. So mod, blah, 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 modules export, or module exports, and then router. All right, so now we are exporting the router and our terminal should be happy now. Yep, ready for requests. Let's go back to our front end here and let's type in API and jobs is our new route. Enter, see all jobs here, and then you can go back to the terminal. It says, let's go fetch jobs. So we're ready. You can see that, that we're getting the request for our new route. We can add more routes this way. But uh, now let's go fetch the information from the database. All right, so if we first need to connect to a Mongo database here, and the only thing we're missing is to start up the, the route or the connection to the database. So let's do that. I'm going to open up a new terminal section over here, and I'm going to type in MongoD, and then that will start up the server just like we had in our README area here. This is basically to open a new terminal and have that running on the side. All right, I'm going to slide that over. Keep that as a percentage over here. Yeah, something like that. All right, so our 
Nodemon is going to continue to run, our MongoDB is now running, and all we have to do now is start uh, connecting to that database. And so the first thing that we'll need to do is uh, connect with Mongoose. So Mongoose and connect. And basically, if your database doesn't already exist, then Mongo or Mongoose is going to create it for you. And that's really nice. So we'll have local host is what's going to work here. And then we're just going to create the new uh, job board database. And then in there, we're going to create collections, much like a table inside of a a, a uh, SQL database and a lot like a sheet inside of a Excel sheet. So job board, Excel file, and then inside we have sheets of different things so like jobs, candidates, whatever else we would make connections on. But the job board is the database we're going to create. I'm going to hit save and the only thing we need to do is we need to use mongoose uh, promise so that when we have a, a uh, an update to the database, we can we can go fetch and, and basically uh, Mongoose has created a, a better promise to, to use. We're just going to import the global promise into Mongoose. So uh, we're outputting JSON. We have our API that we're pulling in, and then now we're just waiting for responses. And I think now we want to um, start creating our schema. So what does a job look like? So uh, a job's going to have a, a, a model, basically like a mold of every time we add a job, we want it to look the same way. And we don't want weird things to be happening. We don't want a phone number where we expect an age or we don't want an email address where we expect a first name. I may type that and that may just be the way it is. But uh, we, if we can make sure that the right data types are going in the right spots, then our database isn't going to have any issues down the line. So we're going to create a new file. We're going to call it um, the, the uh, model. So I'm going to go up one folder into models, which we haven't created yet. And inside of not modules, models, um, I did it again. Somebody help me spell. <laughs> models, and I'm going to create a job model. So this is going to be one job and we're going to be able to use this uh, along the way. Uh, so let's do this. Let's go into um, here, new models, and then in models we're going to create a new file, job dot, oh, job dot js. All right, so in job.js we're going to basically come in with mongoose because it's going to help us set up our, our schema so we're going to require that mongoose be added here mongoose and then we're going to have another const of schema and the schema is going to be a very strict guidelines of how we connect with um, or how we add data and so we're going to create a, a job schema that down. The Y mongoose is coming in here like that. Mongoose schema. All right. So in our new schema, we're gonna have a const of job schema and new schema is a new class of schema, and then we're gonna have an object inside of what the schema looks like. All right, so for a job title in simplicity, I think a title and a description and maybe a flag of if this is available or not. So let's do that. Let's do a title and we'll throw in the type string and then we want this to be required. So in, in the way we can set up the schema, we can define what is required from the get-go and send an error if, it, if it's not uh, what we expect. Um, so true, and then we'll do title is is title field is required. I wonder if you can hear the makerspace in the background. Uh, they're working hard back there. So I'm going to take this same thing and I'm just going to switch it to be um, the description. So the description is required. The only thing we have left is something like is 
available or is published available something like that um, so we're going to create that object the type of this is going to be a boolean and the default so we don't have to do it by we don't have we're gonna have the the schema set this to be true to begin with so if they create a new job it's available from the get-go all right so we need to create a const for job and we need to connect this schema to the database for each job that we create so it's going to have the model and we're going to name this model jobs because this is where all the jobs are going to be pumped into is the, the collection in the database of jobs and we're going to use the job schema and then now all we have to do is module exports exports and we're going to export job all right, so save that. We've got this. Let's see if the terminal is happy now. Um, yep, ready for requests. And let's uh, let's see what we have. I know we've connected the database. We have a route that's not doing anything yet. So maybe if we go ahead and set it up to to show all the jobs that are in the database. So if we go, uh, we have uh, the job model set up so if we say job find all of them um, I want to then have a callback function of jobs and we're going to respond send jobs back in so the jobs that were passed in get sent out and we're going to catch next all right so we're not sending again here I think that's it so here we can show all the jobs that are in the database let's go over to the Mongo client and, and that way we can figure out what's going on all right here I've got the MongoDB compass installed and, and rolling up this basically um, uh, connected locally so I'll just step through that let's do Mongo beta pull this in and then here on the left we we'll have the connect and then it's local connection and then these are the databases that I have locally and we're just going to be creating a new one when we rerun this this uh, database uh, we're basically nodemon so jump in here uh, we should have a new database set up maybe not yet maybe if we create a record so let's do that we're going to find all the jobs that are there jobs don't exist and so we probably need to create one so if we jump down to here we can do something like this we're going to post and we're going to post any new jobs we're basically going to be creating so create and then in the create we're going to request the body that was sent to us so it's gonna be a body of text we're gonna send JSON data to the database to the API it's gonna consume that body content and then basically turn it into a, a uh, a new entry in the database so then we will have a new job that we have sent and then the request send we're just going to basically send that job back through and the catch is going to catch any errors now one thing we need to make sure we have set up is in index we are doing some error handling so error handling handling um, and this is going to be a, a middleware so with this middleware we will basically have app dot use and the function basically this function is going to wrap the entire project and if anything happens we will be able to to call, ah. Hold on. So in the function, the parameters are error. The request 
the response, and the next. So what's going to happen next after the error is really up to, to this, but we're going to have a status. We're going to send a status back of the error of 422, and then in the send, we're going to send in the error. So error occurred and send in error and the message that came with that error. All right, so that message comes through and now the next will fire any errors that, that come through here. So um, we can create a new job. But let's give this a shot inside of Postman. So let's show you how to, to do that. Um, we're going to create a new request and I've got <coughs> job board created here. And so if I type in a new request name, I can add it into job board. I've already got some created, so I'm going to go to collections and job board. And if we want to post to create a new job, I've already got this, this uh, markup set up, but it's going to create a title and description. We've got a burger maker. And if you like people and grills, you'll do great. And so let's send it and let's see what we get back. Super. So we've got the title, the description. We have a new uh, unique ID that came from the database and by default is available is true. So let's jump over to Mongo. Let's jump into uh, refresh, get job board, jobs. We refresh and we get Burger Maker. All right, so let's jump back into here and I'll do Smoothie Maker. If you like people and uh, healthy living, you'll do great here. Send. So new job. Let's go in here, refresh. We have two jobs now. So this is awesome. We have the API working. You can add jobs to the API. Now we need to be able to consume, um, uh, basically spit out all of the jobs that exist. And that's how this is going to work. So if I jump back, we can go to get all jobs and API jobs with a get request. And remember the other one was a post request. So we create a job with post which is what our API says here. We post to create and we get to, to receive. So get all jobs, we hit send, and we should see two jobs. Now, how do we need to get one of these jobs? If we wanna show a listing of just one job and not all of them, we could use the ID as the unique identifier to find it. So let's do that. Let's get one, um, we will uncomment. We will basically use the same format here. Copy and paste that. And then it's instead of job, it's going to be jobs. And instead of finding all of them, we're going to find by the, the you can either find by the ID. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to find one and we're going to find by the ID. So the ID is underscore ID. And then we're going to pull in the ID with a parameter. So we have the ID parameter. This is dynamic. You won't be typing colon ID. You're going to actually put the, the ID here. So let's do that. If we get one job, we're going to do API jobs and then the ID of that job. And that's how this is going to be done. So we can find the ID in the, in the path by doing um, the request dot params is the, the variable. Um, and then ID in params. So in the params, we have one variable here, and it's ID. So we want to grab that, and then then we're going to I'm just going to bump all this down. So we're going to find the one. Then uh, if the the job exists, let's send it. If not, let's catch it and throw the error and see what happened. All right. So let's go into our database. Let's grab this ID for the smoothie maker. Let's replace this ID here and send. And now we have Smoothie Maker as one job in the database instead of both of them. All right, the next thing we want to do and the last thing that would complete our being able to CRUD, create, update, or create, CRUD, create, read, update, delete, um, we would want to be able to, to delete by ID. So let's router delete find one by ID and what we're going to do here is find by ID ID and remove usually find by yeah hmm. I'm expecting that 
find by ID and remove. All right, so that is their job request. Then, yeah, looking good. So let's see if we can remove this one. So we're going to go to delete. We've got the delete method. We're going to create that same ID right there. Then we hit send. It's going to send back the ID. Let's go check out our database and see how many we have left. So refresh. We have one left. We know that this method is deleting them properly if we give it the right ID. So let's see if we put in one that's not correct. Let's go back to Postman. Let's go to five. We'll just do a couple numbers and send. And it says cast of object failed of value blank uh, for models of jobs. So basically, um, we, we could not find this, this job. So sad. Uh, all right. <clears throat> and that, basically, if you wanted to be able to put, we could do the same thing. So we want to update a specific job here. And if we want to update a job, but we could still use the ID instead of remove by ID and, um, sorry, find by ID and remove, we're going to find by ID and update. And so the rest goes in is in the then, we're going to send the vehicle, but we're also going to be not passing the job in here. But we're going to go into job, we're going to find one, and we're going to be finding the one with the ID. So ID, just like we did with find and update, we're going to update request params.id, and then we'll have a then. And that's going to be function, and we're going to send. So um, what we've got here is we update this ID, and we need to send in our request um, body, just like we do with the post update. When we send data, we grab the, the body content, which is what we're doing here, and we update this one by ID. And then, once that, that update is complete, we're going to go and fetch that one by ID and send in the update. So we don't want to see what the old data look like. We want to see what the new data look like. Save. And then now if we go to Postman, we can go in here and, and create a new um, request. So let's do that. We're going to go in here. We're going to create, I guess we're not going to duplicate here. Let's do this. Save as an update job. Go down to job board, save job board, and then in the body we're going to do raw JSON and here we're going to say title is best um, burger maker. I think that's the one that we have available to us. The only thing we need to go back and do, burger maker is left, grab the ID, and I'm going to throw in the ID as jobs. We are putting, so we're updating, and then we're just going to send a new title. So if I hit send, I uh, got it. So router dot put is the request that we're missing. So we're updating with the put request. Hit save. Go back to Postman. Hit send, and then we'll see how this data rolls out. All right. It says job is not defined. So let's see where that's coming in. Ah, uh, gotcha. On the, the find one, we should be uh, with the promise of then we should have job come back in and then respond with the the job that was thrown back at us. So let's save. Let's go back to Postman, it failed, we hit send, and then we should see that the best burger maker is what we have now. So if we go back to the database, burger maker is what we started off with, we refresh, and now it's best burger maker. So that's how we update. That's our CRUD, create, read, update, and delete. If you guys have any questions about how to 
how to set up the, the API. If you have any problems, maybe hit me up on GitHub in this repo. I'll put a link in the description. And then also, if you uh, need any help with anything else, happy to help. All right, signing out. Uh, me, me, me.